Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Monday. It is May 4th. This will be our chart lesson for today. And a couple of things. Tomorrow is my daughter's graduation, and they're, it's kind of an oddball thing they're doing. They're actually going to record this thing and make a video out of it since we can since we can't all get together in the normal graduation hall or whatever. So it's going to be kind of different and it's early in the afternoon. It's like I have to be down there at three 30. So it may interfere with our chart lesson tomorrow. I'm going to try to do the chart lesson a little bit early and see if I can get it done before I leave out. But I just don't know how it's going to work out, how the day's going to play out. So, but I want to give you a heads up just in case there's no chart lesson tomorrow. You'll understand why I'm going to try to get something done. But if I can't get it done before I leave out, and I do have to leave early, then there probably won't be one. So, uh, but, but anyway, let's, let's get to today. Another thing I'm going to try to do, I'm trying my hardest to, to shorten these things. They're just too long. 30 minutes is plenty and probably too much. 20 minutes is probably more reasonable. 15 or 20 minutes, that's really all we need. And that's really all it used to take when I just went over the trades. But I've been trying to show some charts, and I think that's helpful for people, so I want to continue to do that. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to show two or three charts each day, and then I'm going to show the trades. And then if we start to get much over 20 or 30 minutes, I may just cut it off at noon, because that's usually when I'm done trading anyway. And you can see there wasn't much afternoon today on a normal. This is the, the volatility is much more normal lately. This is, you can see, this is nothing like what we were seeing before. Uh, this is kind of a range day today with a slight upward bias to it. But you can see if you back out, it's just a range day today. And this is the overnight in here. And then we, we just kind of moved up into the upper side. And we didn't break out till almost 2 o'clock, which is cutoff time. So this was just a range day. And so that's how you had to trade it. And if you look for a measured move, that was your first leg up. And then there's leg two. And you can see we actually surpassed that one. And then the other one, I would have measured this leg. And then when we started up from here, I would have looked for a measured leg. And we outdid that one too. So uh, the first, the, the main target you had to assume all day, we were trying to fill that gap, which is this red line. That's where we closed on Friday. And you can see that gap in there. And that's that would have been my number one target once we reach that i would have looked for these measured legs and then after that you would look back to the next support resistance area and you can see where we got to right across here there was that's where we broke lower below this support before and we've never really come back and tested that so that's what prices were doing if you draw a line across there And you can see that prices were really coming back and testing that last resistance support area right in there. And we really tested that to the tick. So that would have been your next. Actually, I, you would have looked at this one too. And But we went right on through that one. So then look at the next one, which is really right across there. That's the only time you really want to look at the price action in the next day when there is no previous price action in this day. And you can see this is the line that separates Friday from today. And so there was no previous previous price action. So we have to go back over into this day. And that's the only time you'll look at the price action in the other day. Everything you need is in today's price action. And if you try to go over there, otherwise you'll just confuse yourself. So... Okay, this trader sent me, uh, he sent me his actual performance, but he had this attached to it. And so I know some somebody heard me that day. I told you to write it down and stick it somewhere, stick it to your forehead or stick it to your computer. And so obviously somebody took me to heart and they posted their key entry point right there where they could see it. But here's the interesting part of that. Here's his performance. He took 34 trades. 28 winners, six losers, 15 flat to flat trades. I'm not sure what that, I guess he didn't, does that mean he didn't make anything? I don't know what that means, to be honest. I don't have that on my performance measurement, so.
No. 28 and 6 be 34. I don't know what that means. Maybe he'll explain it to me and I'll pass it on. Some of you may know what it means and I don't. But I don't know what it means. So uh, flat to flat trades. I don't know what that means. But anyway, he had 34 trades, 6 losers, and 82.35. And then flat to flat, profitable 88. So I don't know. If somebody... Maybe he'll explain what that means. I'm assuming he knows what it means, but I don't know what that means. That's a new one to me. Flat to flat percent profitable. I guess that means going from in to out. So maybe that includes his runners. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss. So, But anyway, good trading. And obviously he took me to hard about the internet to key entry points and his trading looks pretty doggone good. So. Um, I thought I'd share. Okay, this trader sent me his chart. And you can see we're just going sideways here. You've got resistance across here. And your support's not as clear. I would be looking for maybe this, but you may even push right through there. The key here is you've got resistance. So you can't be going long into that. He took a entry right here. That is actually here's your new high because we haven't made a new high yet here so that's a first entry second entry third entry so he took a fourth entry long right there right into resistance so not a good idea even if it was a second entry going long right into that resistance across there is not it's just not a good idea here you've only been down there you only shown it one time so you're you're not as worried about the low side, but here you've turned down. Look how many times you've turned down across here. Several times, then again, then again, then again. And now you're making lower highs here. So you don't want to be going long right into that. On a first entry, uh, or I mean a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, on a fourth entry. So that's not a... What you might look at here is there's a failed second entry short, but all that turns out to be is a long trap. And when you're going sideways, forget about second entries like that because you'll just get chopped up. And you think you outsmarted everybody on the failure and it goes higher. And then it ends up being a second entry short because notice that new swing low first entry. So when it broke higher and turned down, that's a second entry short. That's where you should, that's the entry there. Is the second entry short? This is not valid right here. You've got your two swings, but it never got confirmed. We just went right through it. So um, hopefully that's clear. But that's you just got trapped to the long side on a second entry short right there. But you shouldn't get trapped on that one. That one shouldn't fool a lot of people because you're going long into resistance there. Look how flat the EMA is. It's actually starting to turn down right there. Okay, here's another chart a trader shared with me. And he had a short right here. Notice that you got a trend line. I, if you draw that trend line. Okay, I flipped over here to a different chart where we could draw this. But you draw that trend line. Well, he went short right there. I think it broke higher and then he turned and went short. You can see that trend working up and you're still making, you got a little resistance there. Just not really a good, it worked for him, but you see it. It, he got just enough to get his scalp and then it went back up and probably would have stopped him out and then went down. Just not a good place to enter. Wait on a lower high or something. At least wait on your break, your close outside and you high, and you don't get that there. And he's coming down. Now you got two legs down, and it looks like he takes a – he went long here. But let me show you. If you're going to go long here, this is your signal bar. Your signal bar is always the lowest or highest bar. Here's your highest bar in that swing coming down. This is your highest bar. Those are matching highs. But this is your lowest bar in this swing. So that's your signal bar. So if you were going to enter here, it has to be one tick above that bar. And that's a very bearish bar. So when you, by the time you enter here, you're way too late. You're two bars too late. Because you're entering one tick above this bar when it closes. So that would have been on this bar. 
and you're not entering till way over here and way up here. The move is over here. So you get stopped out only to watch it go higher. But if you'd have entered in the right spot, even then with a bad signal bar, because that's a bearish bar, you still would have had a good trade. And the other thing is that I see people doing over and over. They look at this and say, well, that's too bearish. But here, here's a nice bullish bar. And they go long. That's not your signal bar. You can't, you can't enter late. If you can't enter on the correct signal bar, skip the trade. You can't wait till this one or then even this one and try to go long up here. So not sure what he was thinking on that one. Here's another one. He went short. Uh, actually, he told me that. I think he said his daughter accidentally hit the enter button. <laughs> so keep your kids away from your <laughs> trading screen because if that was, if he was trading live, that could cost you some big money there. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to say I've never made a mistake, but I haven't had that one happen to me, thank goodness. So um, here's a pretty good short. It's still in the wrong place because here is your signal bar right here. That's a high swing bar in this swing. So this is your signal bar. So if you're going to enter right here, you got to enter one tick below that. He just ends up with two more sideways bars. And then in the middle of this bar, he goes short. I, I, I don't know what he's thinking there. If it would have broke higher and turned back down, maybe you go short on one tick below that bar. But this is your signal bar. And your last swing low was way down here. So that's a first entry, second entry, third entry, fourth entry. And you could, because that's correct, and you could call that another entry. So that could be a fifth entry that he went short on. Now, you could look at this like a first entry, and then if it would have broke higher, a failed second entry. Again, it's a little bit of a trap. It's not it really you just you're arranging here, and you're at the top of the range, and now you're headed down. And there's just no entry there. That's not how we use our entries. So I just wanted to, and, and it works for him. So he just reinforces a really bad trade, and the next time he gets burned, and he can't figure out what happened. So you don't want to reinforce bad trades. So hope that's clear. Okay, one more chart here. And this this trader, he sees it pretty good. He sees the range here. He's got the support right. He's got the resistance pretty much right here. But again, he's not entering properly. And this is where people really mess up. All right. He's got a long right here. Of course, he marked that green. But your signal bar is right here. So if you were going to enter here, it actually probably broke lower and turned and went out the upper side. I'm pretty sure it did that if I remember the price action right. So if you were going to enter here, it'd be one tick. Let me make this a little bigger. It would be one tick above this bar. Actually, that didn't break lower, so... The only way you could enter this would be one tick above here. And you could look at that as a first entry. Now the failed second entry shorts right there. So and everything's still below the EMA. I, I wouldn't enter that trade. There's just no trade here. But if you were going to enter, this is your signal bar. And your entry would be one tick above that. Not way out here two bars later. I, I don't know what. Same thing right here. Actually, this is your signal bar. So you would enter one tick above it, so you would enter on that bar, but but I don't know if that's what arrows point to entry bars. Blue lines on entry bars are entry points, so okay. So he, he's just so where were we? So yeah, this is not a this is not a signal bar. This is your signal bar. So this should be your entry bar, the one right next to it which is not a good one. This one is your signal bar, so that would be your entry bar. I don't see the line. Here, your signal bar is right here. Notice that I, first entry, second entry. That's a questionable signal bar anyway. It's not really very bullish, but your entry would be, your blue line should be one tick above this, and this should be your entry. You're, you're entering two, two bars too late. So yeah, I'm not, you know, maybe he's thinking, well, this was too bearish, so I'm waiting on this bullish one. You, 
That's not how it works. If this bar doesn't qualify, then the trades are no good. Just forget it. So I hope that's clear. Then he's got this big trend coming down. He gets close outside a new low. And we're way away from the EMA. But he went short here. I don't know why you went short right there. You got your break. This is your signal bar. So that's where you should have gone short. One tick below that. If you're going to go short there. And if you went short there, it would have been a winner. So, again, you're one, two, three, four bars too late. You've already had your close and new low before you're even entering. Now you're, you're looking for a long here. This would have been maybe a long right there. And here you got it right. There's your signal bar. One tick below that. I can't tell if that's one tick or not, but you would have gone short. One tick below that bar right there on a sale stop. So you got that one right. And then if you were going to go long down here, that's your signal bar. Notice that's a new high, so that's a first entry. The better entry is right here on your second entry long. Of course, it's right into the EMA, but with it going back and forth like this and just coming off the lows, you may still take that trade. But that's your second entry, so you would enter one tick above that bar. If you were going to enter on the first entry, it's one tick above that bar. And you're one, two, you're two bars too late again. Same thing here. This is your signal bar. And that's a, probably a good short. Broke higher turn. You would have gone. You're, you could have waited for that to close. But your better entry is one tick below here when it went out the other side. Notice that new low. First entry. Actually, your second entry short's right there. But that's not a very good setup. But now you get a double test. So I wouldn't have. I don't. You got that little failed break higher. That's a good setup. But you're two bars too late. Your entry is one tick below this bar or either one tick below that one when it went back through. If you waited on the lower high, you're right into that EMA. You're not much room back to here. Then you take another short here. Again, this is your signal bar. So it's too bullish. No trade there. You got to skip that. Even though that's a nice move, there's no setup right here. And if you were going to enter... It's one tick below this bar. So right here, it looks like you're late on this one. I don't know. Maybe you just marked your line there, and you know you have to enter one entry. So I think that was it. Yep, that was it. So I hope that's clear. A lot of people make that mistake of the signal bar is not arbitrary. It's always the highest bar in the swing. So that's your signal bar going short. That's your signal bar going long. There's your one going short. There's your one going long, short, long. It's always the lowest bar in those swings. This would be your signal bar long down here. This is the one short here, short here, long, long, long. I'm not saying these are good entries. Just trying to point out the signal bar right here, right here. This is a signal bar down. There's your swing eye signal bar, swing eye signal bar, swing low signal bar. So I hope that's clear. Okay, I had to show one more. This trader sent me this, and I don't even know what to make of this. They're just lines that have no rhyme or reason. And, and basically, this trader says, I'm really struggling. I, I can't get a trade right. So I, I can't. He, he's got so much stuff on here, I can't tell. If he went short or long. It looks like maybe he went short right here. Or maybe he went long down here. I can't even tell. But there's just trades all over the place that don't make sense, really. So I don't know what he's doing. 
I sent him a couple of emails and maybe looks like maybe he went short right here. There's no real setup there. Why would you go short way down here? There's no setup there. Maybe he went long here. I don't know. I, since he's losing, I guess he probably went short there. Again, he went long. I, I just, I don't. I mean, none of these, none of these are anything near what we do. You know, there's no trade here. I mean, I don't even see one trade that fits our criteria, our rules, or anything. I don't know what all this is over here. Now you might go short right here, but it looks like he went long, went long right here. This is the upper side of your trading range, and so you'd be looking to get short. So I don't, I can't make heads or tails, but I, but when you back out, prices are just going side. Look how flat the EMA is right there. There's no trend. There's a slight upward bias, but your trend is way over here. There's one trend line working up there, and then you're going sideways, and there's a trend working down, and then another trend working up, but. All this other stuff that's going up through here, I don't know what that is, but uh, you don't need all that. It's just confusing you. So get rid of all that and go watch the videos on how to draw your trend lines and how to trade ranges, and that will help you immensely. And I did want to show one more here. Uh, this trader went short right here, and we had a little conversation. I'm not sure he understood. Um, there's a second entry short there. You can see first entry, second entry, but look how we're going sideways. And he's actually got the little range drawn there. So the problem is if you go short right there, you're going short right into the support. So you need more room. Now you might go long on that failed breakout because look at all that room back to the top. That's and right here. You got all that room short back to the bottom. That's a good short and that might be a good long, but you can't enter in here without enough room you're, you're playing range rules and, and when you got to get in close to each edge so you want to either go short near this resistance or long near this support with enough room to get out before you get back to the other side that's how you play the range so by going short right there you went short right into the support it worked but it's not a good trade the better one is right here going long or right here going short and you can see I, both of those you had plenty of room so this was another one you didn't trade by the rules and you got lucky just don't let it reinforce a bad trade and he took another one up here uh, this was your signal bar he went long one tick there and looks like he scalped out and then his runner got stopped out that's what it looks like there so two trades two winners but this one was lucky this one not too bad Okay, back to the chart. I'm gonna run through the trades real quick. You can see early on we were we were really were still trending up. But you got a lot of strong resistance here. You had a trend line working up, a break, two legs up, and then we just kind of started going sideways there. Ran down here, another little tight range, and a big trend up, and then we just went sideways again. So we had a little failed break lower and then we moved higher again. So again, your first leg was here. Then from there, but I would also measure this leg from here. You can see that correction. We did push up one more time and we just went sideways. Let's back out a little more. We can see this. And you can see the EMA there. It's, it's up and down, but it's mostly sideways. You know, that's the way it'll do. It'll swim up and down. As prices go up, it'll kind of turn up, and it goes down, and it kind of swings down. But for the most part, your EMA is flat. It's like a little flat roller coaster almost. So that tells you it's a range day. 
we'll back out one more time and look at the big picture. But you can see the overnight lows, the overnight highs at that point, and we're inside it. Anytime prices are trading right in the middle of the overnight highs and lows, especially when they're not any more than these are, it's maybe 35, 40 points. It's not a real big range. That's a range day. So, uh, but notice we had the trend working up. We had the break. This is all before seven o'clock. And then we had one leg up and then two legs up. And so this is right at seven. Seven came right in this little correction. There is a little failed second entry short there. That's a possibility of going long right there. It's not a great signal bar, but it's a trap, so it doesn't matter. So if you saw that, you might take that. But then we ran up and we made, we got the second leg up. We made a lower high. There's plenty of room back to the EMA. That's a good short, basically on a, notice we made that high. You test it once, you test it twice. It's a double test. We trade trend down, then we kind of run back up again. And you get another little, double test here you made that high you test it once twice and you really could call that a test and you get another bearish bar with enough room there and notice how this is why you got to have enough room to get out because notice it bounces there and goes back up and then turns down and if you had a really good signal bar here i'm probably take that trade it's a little close to the ema but there's still i mean these bars are pretty big so you still may have room there um at some point when you test this enough, I mean, that's the thing about the a range day. Notice it's going to, it almost, it, even when it gets a little resistance, it eventually pushes through. We didn't get any resistance at all there. Now look how we're kind of playing it on both sides. It's, it, it, you basically treat it, see how we try to get through and can't, and then finally it pushes through. And So you got to be careful going long or short right into that. You want to have a little bit of room. Now, if you get an, a trap or something, or if it's a strong trend day, you may not worry about it as much. But when it's flat like this, you got to be really careful. So I've had that conversation with another trader for the last couple of days. We've talked about it a few times. And, and you know, one time I, I didn't worry about that so much, but traders struggle with knowing when to use, when you can trade into it or not. So you're better off just not to trade into it at all and then you won't have that problem now this is a case we'll explain this one notice how we're going sideways and we break out and we pull back and you get that bullish bar you got to go long right above that that's close enough i'd probably take that trade you just push through it so the chance, odds are you you won't have as much resistance going back through it again because you just probably wiped out all the stops and all there and really you'd prefer to see a really good setup here that tests this side of it and then goes long longer but this is coming down we had the break a new low we went sideways and you push out pull back and there's first entry second entry third entry fourth entry it's a fourth entry counting from the lows, but it's a first entry counting from the long. So you don't get a failed second entry. You don't get a second entry, but notice you made that low. You test it once, you test it twice, you get a double test and you're on the other side of really both of them here where you go long. So I like that one. You, that one's close to being green, but you also had a little double bottom. So it, it's this is not really strong strong support because it didn't really hold even this time you had the support here but it didn't really hold and then prices were stuck underneath so it's not strong support but you still want to be aware of it so but anyway we run on up and this is just kind of a repeat pattern of what we just saw right here except it's just smaller I didn't draw my oops. I didn't draw my upper. You can see that little trading range, and we broke out, pulled back. It's a little breakout, pull back long. The key here is your resistance here. If you don't have enough room to get out there, you can't take that trade. But that's that broke lower. That's that little failed break lower. 
and nice reversal type bar that's a nice bar and it pushed right on through this time this is this is another clue that we may go higher here look how bullish that move up is you're going to get another attempt at another leg it's just i mean that's just so strong of a move and if you measure that i'd probably just measure it to right there You can see we even went higher than that. So, and that is a failed second entry short too, because well, no, it's it's really not because that's just a first entry. So, second entry, that's really a third entry. So you really don't get the second. It's just a double test. You made that low. You test it once, twice. Bullish bar. It's a repeat pattern really too. Except this one's even better because it fell out out the bottom and this one didn't. You get a little pullback with a second entry, but that's your signal bar. I can't use that signal bar. So if you had a bullish bar here, you'd probably want to take that long. And notice that you got a little trend working up. You get a break. Move to a new high. Look how far you are away from the EMA. You need a you really want to wait on a lower high. You want to see it come back. But sometimes you don't get a lower high when you're that far overdone. And it's a, you're expecting a failed breakout, possibly, too. Really, your overnight high is a little higher than that. So, uh, But you'd add some resistance there. So you may, the key is you're just far away from the EMA and you're looking for it to come back. But with a bar that bearish, you might take that trade. What you might do is if it breaks lower in here, you might drop a limit order back one tick below that one to see if you get filled. Or maybe even just a couple of ticks because you're really, if you try to get too greedy, you'll miss the trade. And so you probably would have missed a nice move there. And at this point, you're just looking for it to come back to the EMA. I marked this one green, so it's a little aggressive. But you don't get a lower high till way down here. And notice you're working down. Notice how it shot right through the EMA. Just like it did here. That's very bearish. You're probably going to get another leg. So you get a first entry, second entry, right there. Nice bearish bar. You got enough room to that little bottom. It actually goes further, bounces. You're just kind of, there's a second entry long there, but I wouldn't take that below the EMA. And I wouldn't take that lower high right into it. So just really no trade until it comes back here and then it drops down. But again, I don't get a very good bar. There is a little higher low right here that you might could take if you had enough room to get out for that EMA. If it broke lower and I had a little more room, I'd probably mark that one. That's a possibility. That's one you could always mark green. Because this is a range. You can see this. We've bounced here a few times. So we're looking to get long here or short right here right now. And then we run up, notice the new low, you're running up, you get a first entry, and that's a second entry short right at the highs. Just make sure you got enough room to get out. It pushes higher. And you get a failed breakout here, with, and that's a new swing low, so there's another second entry. My bar was questionable. It's mostly bearish. I'm going to go ahead and mark that one at least green. If you had a good signal bar, I'd probably take that short. You got the lower high here, but now you're right back in the middle of that range. Just not a good spot, really. Of course, you're expecting prices to come down here, and that's the first break. There is a little hidden second entry there, too. Notice that low. You work up, you pull back, you work up, and then you turn down. So there's a little hidden second entry there. Then you just run up here and get in this real tight one real tight range and again you're just looking to go long off the lows or short off the highs and you got an entry here with enough room to get out go long notice that low first entry or first touch second touch so a double test bullish bar go long right there if you got enough room you didn't have enough room coming back wasn't very good signal bar there and then all of a sudden you get another chance to go long with plenty of room you are right into the EMA look how it 
kind of plays off of it a few times. But again, you got a, you made that low, you get a double test. You're right at the lows. That's the only way you can trade that. So, but you got to be leery of that. Here's here you get a little failed breakout. Chance to get short right at the high. Plenty of room. And if you get a failure, a lot of times it takes on off, and that's what happens here. And you do make a first entry, then a second entry. So that's a failed second entry long with a little bit of room before here. And if we're coming back down to test this line, so that's another one. The problem was it didn't break lower right there, and that's an inside bar. And a lot of little stacked up stuff right there. But that's another one that you could probably mark green at least. Because you are below the EMA, you are looking for prices to come back down to the blue line. We actually end up going further. And if you measure that, you can see your target's way down here too. And of course you bounce. Not a very good signal bar trying to come back. No higher or low till right here. I marked that one because look how we run up and push through the EMA pull back. We're back inside. That's your higher or low. And you actually have a lower high again right here uh, you so you would have entered one tick above that but your signal bar still has to go right here and that's an inside bar but this is a good enough signal bar this is just giving you a little better entry so I wouldn't use that for your signal bar that's technically your signal bar it's still a little aggressive it's not a true failed second entry short but it still looks like a reversal push through the EMA, pull back and test it, and then go higher. Then you run up here and first entry, and that's a second entry. I didn't mark this on my chart, but if you had a little lower entry here, notice that I, and first entry, and then you run down, and then when it broke back above, it's a second entry. So it's not a great entry on mine. If you had a chance to enter right there, you could. If you had a little smaller bar down here, And then we come back here, notice that I, first entry, second entry, and you got a little double test of that low. That's a nice setup right there. Look at it go. And I'd look for a second entry based on this bar right here. Or, I'm sorry, a measured leg based on that bar. And that'd put you right up in there. We, we ended up going higher on all this stuff. We had several measurements right in that same general area, but we went higher on all of them. So and that's that got us set up, and believe it or not, I've got it to 40 minutes today, so I'm still not where I want to get it, but I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, I explained about tomorrow. We'll have to see how that works out, but I'm going to wrap it up for today. Hopefully we'll be back tomorrow, but if not, definitely on Wednesday. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And we'll see you next time.